Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to another video tutorial. Today I am guest designing for Stencil Girl and I'm going to be using some of her stencils today to create some fun backgrounds. I'm going to start off with the Inky Circle Stencil and I'm using various colors of Distress Ink. I'm using Broken China, Peacock Feathers, Salty Ocean, and Faded Jeans to create this background. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the stencil and move it slightly to the bottom right side just so it's slightly off center and I'm going to go over and I'm going to redo all of these stencils again by using the same colors but I'm going to try and use different colors for each circle than I did on the previous one. The inks that I am using are oxide inks so I find them slightly more vibrant than the original Distress inks and they just react to water in a different way but I'm not going to be using water so you could use any type of inks for this really. So once that was finished I'm going to go ahead and I am going to stamp an image. I am using the sparkle in the rain stamp from visible image and I love the solid images and the effect they have on these backgrounds. Now because I'm using oxide ink, the oxide ink is going to repel the black ink a little bit. So you're going to see a little bit of those circles show up in the black when you're stamping. If you don't want this to happen, I personally think it looks really cool, you could just use plain distress inks instead of the oxide inks. And that would have no issue whatsoever. So I'm just making sure that this is nice and inked up using some VersaFine ink. And I'm going to stamp this down onto the background. And for me personally, whenever I am doing one of these solid images, I personally really like to go over the image twice just to get any sort of white spots out of the way there. And my Misty Stamp Positioner here allows me to do that and stamp in the same spot each time. All right, so now that that's finished, I'm going to set it off to the side and I'm going to do another background technique with another stencil. Now for this one here, I am going to show you how to do it using the Born to Perform stamp from Visible Image. And these ones here I'm going to show you because I'm going to be stamping first and I'm going to be using some Nouveau Mousse to cover up the stencil. I'm going to go for the same idea as the first stamp. I'm going to put it in the top left hand corner so that I could have the steep feet stick out a little bit at the bottom. And I'm going to ink that up again using the VersaFine ink. So I'm just going to speed it up here a little bit so that you get the impression without having to sit for a long period of time. So I did go ahead and double stamp that off screen. Then what I did was I cut out a piece of masking paper. So this is a, just a scrap piece of masking paper. You can see I've used it many times before. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp the ballerina. This is Inka Dinka Do masking paper, which means that it has a sticky back to it that is covered by a blue paper at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out this ballerina, but when I'm cutting it out, I'm actually going to be avoiding all of those splatter marks around her tutu, all that detail there. So I'm just going to go along the legs and then just do a plain circle or a half circle around the tutu. That way it doesn't take very long. Once that is all finished being done and cut out, I'm going to put that over top of the original image. This is going to protect the image while I'm adding my mousse to it. So for the stencil, that is an Art Deco Flower Medallion stencil by Stencil Girl, and I absolutely love the detail on it. So I'm going to add some post-it tape. I'm going to stick it down to my craft mat as well as from the back of my card onto the stencil. And I'm going to use this mousse here to cover my stencil. I've had this mousse for a little while, so it has been sitting there for a little bit. I noticed it's not as smooth as the previous time that I used it, but once I started working with it, it became really malleable again, and it was no problem using it. So I'm just going along the circle here and I'm just flattening it out each time so that I have a nice even surface. So I scrape down to make it smooth each time. And I'm just going to remove the stencil here and let it dry. Now, So once I remove the stencil, obviously I still need to remove the mask as well. And if you have any sort of areas that got the mousse you don't want it, you can grab your palette knife and you could just clean that up. And usually it's not an issue. So now I have the ballerina poking out here and it's fully black against the background. So that's a nice way to mask it. I ended up doing a third card as well. While I fold these card bases, I'll let you know. The card bases measure 11 by four and a quarter and are folded in half at five and a half. So I'm gonna add my covers here onto the front. You can see I cut some of them down a little bit using a stitched rectangle die. And you can see that I actually made a third card. I use the exact same technique as the ballerinas, except for the fact that I used 
texture glitter paste instead of Nouveau mousse. I'll link to it below in the video description, but it's the same process, so I didn't want you to get a little bit bored. And the stamps I used for that are the Rock Out as well as the guitar small Guitars Small Stencil from Visible Image the stamp and from Stencil Girl the stencil. So now, lastly, I'm just going to add my sentiments. I'm going to be using the Go To Words stamp that has happy birthday in this nice script writing. My backgrounds are quite busy, so I don't want anything too fancy. So you can see I just move my cardstock up an inch each time and it stamps it out perfectly even, so it makes it much easier when I'm cutting these out. So when I add my paper trimmer here, I just mark it at one inch and then I pull up and mark it at one inch and it cuts each one of them exactly the same. So this is a final look at the cards here. I hope you'll check them out over on my blog. I have more information about the products used as well as links to Stencil Girl and Visible Image. And I hope you enjoyed this card tutorial. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I have another suggested video there on other things you can do with stencils, also using Stencil Girl stencils. And you're welcome to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.